Blog Talk Radio. Hello out there, everybody. It is Wednesday, May 30th, 2012. I am David Domzowski, founder of the Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. Before I introduce you to our guest today, let me share a few quick notes. First off, if you haven't done so, please go out and pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention, Triumphs and Failures of Entrepreneurs. You can do so for just 99 cents on Kindle, Nook, iPad, and other e-readers. You can also get a paperback copy for just under $10 at Amazon and CreateSpace. Go to financialbid.com, click on the book section at the very top, next to the login button for more information. Now, secondly, we are still finalizing everything for landlord intervention. We had a, a few issues with the cover, which we're uh, rectifying right now. And uh, as to, uh, to remind you, this is a book by a gentleman who has been in the real estate rental business for over 20 years. He gives you a fantastic step-by-step how-to guide for you to begin your own career as a landlord. Now, we plan, plan to release this book. We're going to push it back a little bit, as I said, uh, to early to mid-June. Now, let me introduce you to our guest for tonight. His name is Todd Romer. Todd is the president of Young Money Events, which brings relevant and in-person financial and entrepreneurship education to the college market. He is also the publisher of Young Money Magazine, and Todd joins us right now. Todd, welcome to FB Radio. Thanks for having me, David. It's great. Oh, no problem at all. Let's just jump right into it, Todd. Can you walk us through and give us a, a you know a brief uh, history of your of your background prior to prior to Young Money? Sure, prior to Young Money, I uh, graduated University of Dayton, and then I was in medical sales for about uh, ten years. So, completely different industry. Sure, sure. So, why did you decide to start Young Money Magazine, and you know what, what was the whole uh, what was the whole reason behind it? Sure, when I started around 16 years of age investing in the stock market I had a lawn mowing business that was really bringing in a few thousand dollars a year uh, through high school and through college and when I had this cash in my hand my father had just simply said you know you do something with that you need to 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 buy a stock and I said I have no idea what a stock is from that experience I, I bought 10 shares of Johnson & Johnson stock and and uh, by the time I was a senior in college that stock had split twice and I had uh, my $430 investment turned into over $2,000, and wow. I realized that I had something, uh, some knowledge that perhaps maybe most of my peers weren't really uh, thinking about or even knew about, and that was the power of compound interest and in getting started early. So um, I started the Young Money Magazine because at that time in college, I was picking up Money Magazine, Smart Money Magazine, Kiplinger's, and all the content was way over my head. It talked about how parents with uh, children need to ret- invest for retirement, saving sure. for college education, all the things that was unrelatable to me. And I would only go for the stock picks in those publications. So uh, I, I couldn't believe that there was not a uh, media, some media or, or publication at the time. Uh, this is back in you know 1990, uh, 1990, if you will. And then sure. it took me several years to uh, kind of – figure out my uh, true calling, which was to continue to be an entrepreneur from a lawn mowing business to to uh, a publisher of a magazine. So in uh, 1999, I realized there still wasn't a print magazine out there for the young adult market, and that's uh, the pr- really pr- primary reason why I started the magazine. So I, I know you're doing speaking events now as well. So why the transition? What led you to tra- you know transition from you know being the magazine publisher to being a public speaker? And do you feel this is a, maybe a more effective way to uh, spread your message these days? Yeah, absolutely. 2008, it, it started to be very clear that the magazine business was a, a terrible business to be in, uh, especially print and the young adult market that we reach. So not much of that audience reads print anymore. So uh, outside of our website, uh, when we would do events on campuses around the country, prior to the uh, really uh, the internet was just you know forming in the early you know 2000s and getting a, still print was doing well. We had such great feedback about the magazine that uh, students were now coming to us on campuses with our at our display tent and table and and were asking more questions about how do I get ahead with uh, my student loans. So I've got issues sure. with credit card debt. I have uh, interest in investing. I just ha- I have $3,000 I made from uh, a summer bi- summer work. Uh, what do I do with it? So there was an obvious interest from the market. And then we kind of, because of the print uh, going kind of south in 2009, we then realized we have a whole 
separate business opportunity to get on the, the turf of the college student and hold the relevant financial education events, and that's uh, that's what we're doing now. So just to try to get a timeline here, so 2009, now, is that when, did you stop printing the magazine in 2009? Or Correct. Or is it still in Correct. print? Okay, okay, so just making sure. And then 2010 yep. is when you started uh, Young Money Events, right? That is correct. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Have, so, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. We since since uh, September 2010, we have been on 120, almost 125 campuses around the country uh, with our Young Money Live uh, platform. Okay. So you, you kind of touched on it a little bit uh, in in your previous answer there, Todd. But what is your overarching goal with Young Money events? And can you maybe you tell us a little bit more about what you guys do on campus? Sure. The the overreaching goal with Young Money events is to really change financial behavior. Um, in the magazine, we certainly had a lot of content that could help with understanding financial knowledge, and certainly our goal was to change financial behavior. But now when we're in the face of the college student and uh, we have a an audience, if you will, literally with the presentation that I deliver, uh, we we really are – the goal is to, to really have them look – at how they can change their financial behavior to really reach their goals and dreams. And, and really, the, at the end of the day, this is not only about financial education or to learn about how money works. It's mm-hmm. really to ignite dreaming again within this young adult market who has been kind of the, the dreams, if you will, have been pushed down the last few years with the economy, seeing some sure. of their parents go through some tar- tough times. So that's the overarching goal is to really get young people thinking about hey, if I get this money thing down, I can actually start a business, I can actually think about that dream again and, and perhaps even you know, pursue um, a career that may not be a, an entrepreneurial venture, but certainly uh, just ignite and dream again. That's, that's the overarching goal. Sure. Now, now you said you've been on a, a, about 120 campuses. How, rece- how receptive is the, is the audience? It, you know, your target audience is college students. How receptive are they to, to your message? You know, it's, it's, they're very receptive from... Uh, students at private universities where we've held events such as Georgetown University, you know, 50000 plus a year tuition, to state four-year schools that, uh, you know, tuition is five, dollars $6,000, to two-year community college schools. Uh, students of all economic backgrounds, uh, you know, are, are interested in what, we, what we're talking about. Uh, sure. I believe strongly that that's the case. Of course, not every college student uh, we're not packing out, you know, a 15,000-seat arena on each campus right. to hear me right. speak. But at the at the end of the day, students are uh, interested in money, interested in, in how to get ahead with money, and, and so that they don't go down the same path that perhaps maybe their parents went through, which is holding on to a ton of debt or, or you know, generally speaking, some of the financial uh, – Mistakes that that a lot of Americans and even global we've made over the last several years. So it, it's it's very receptive to be to be uh, directly w- answered answered that question for you. What what kind of feedback are you getting in general, and have you really received any any press on the on the events portion of your of your business? We have we've had Reuters uh, did a story on our event uh, that that went into several pub- newspaper news dailies around the country in September of mm-hmm. 2010 when we launched. Uh, we, we've had actually just a recent uh, – so here and there we'll have news dailies pick us up uh, in the local sure. markets of the event. And uh, we had a uh, local NBC News affiliate in South Bend, Indiana, that uh, came to the event at uh, IUSB in South Bend, Indiana University, South Bend, and uh, did a story on the 6 o'clock news about us being there. And uh, so that was a lot of fun. And we do anticipate uh, more, more media coverage as we go. Excellent, excellent. Now, now, as you know, Todd, and uh, obviously our listeners know, you know, at Financial Bin, we focus on personal finance and entrepreneurship for the Gen Y market as well. Uh, what is one tip that, you know, when you're giving your talks, what is one tip you always leave the audience with? I Really, it's um, in anything uh, to get ahead, I think, in life and generally what, even in handling, handling your money or mm-hmm. talking about how we started Young Money, how I started literally from the, my basement in Cincinnati, Ohio, is the tip is you need to uh, eliminate fear as much as possible. It's not mm-hmm. it's not 100 percent, but also simply the tip of you got to fail your way to success. And and a lot of people have, have heard that before, but some have not, especially the younger people. And and they kind of sure. you know look at me in a, in a strange way. But the the key to success in anything is to try, and, and you're going to fail, but that you got to get back up. So fail your way to success is a big tip, even when it comes to 
you know, managing your money. Um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of students will raise their hand in, in front of their peers, and, uh, you know, I pretty much tell them this is not a uh, time to feel guilty or to be embarrassed about how you've handled your money. Some have had a significant credit card stash and, and uh, pile of debt, and they've, uh, I said, regardless if you have 15 grand that you're embarrassed about, you're still only 20 or 22 or 23. It doesn't matter. You can restart tomorrow. You're still young to get ahead and, and not make those same mistakes going forward. You know, you know, Todd. I guess you know I'm a I'm a member of Gen Y myself, so I always think, you know, wh- where is my generation going to be in five, ten, twenty years? I mean, some of me, part of me thinks that you know we could end up being like our like our grandparents and kind of heading down where we, uh, you know, not not now obviously, but you know, the result of the Great Recession or whatever you want to call it, you know, could be that maybe we're a little bit more cautious, you know, in terms of going into the market or or, or you know different ways to invest our money. Uh, what do you think about that? You know, what what do what do you tell people? Sure. Well, there is a tremendous historical uh, lows in real estate. So you know the right. the old buy low, sell high, it never goes away. That's that's you know that's timeless. So you know not only the stock market do I talk about and where I got my personal start in investing and saw the growth there, but uh, there just the ability to start young and to invest automatically. Uh, monthly, which is really the dollar cost averaging uh, investment philosophy where it doesn't matter about the ups and downs because when you're investing monthly, um, you're, you're, you're going to get the dips and you're going to get the highs. And so just right. to stay invested, um, invest in the good companies. Uh, stocks have, have historically returned close to 10% still on average for the last 70 years. So that's through all the world wars, through all the uh, recessions, uh, still through all the current debt issues that we're dealing with globally. Uh, I believe it's still going to be okay. And then, again, look outside the market, too, uh, for those who want to uh, dabble into real estate. Uh, in the home, there's still no such thing as – there's no still no better thing, I believe, than home ownership. Uh, there's, sure. I could go into a whole reason why, not just from the investment side, but um, there's a you know it's quite a bottom out there for those who want to uh, dabble in that, too. Yeah, that, that's some great. That's some great advice, Todd. It really is. You know, I think just people need to, uh, you know, kind of step back and just reevaluate before they before they think you know the world's ending here. You know, I mean, we people have been through this kind of stuff before. It's just a matter of you know riding it out and you know making smart decisions and ed- educating yourself. Really, right. It it, it really is, and um, that's just really the the key is to 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 keep doing it monthly investing if you can. And, and there's certainly a lot of places that offer uh, ETF investing or even mutual funds for $100 a month once you get settled in to uh, an initial uh, down payment, if you will, into that mutual fund. So uh, those are some some likely places to start slowly building wealth. Not get rich, slowly building wealth. Right. Absolutely. Now, now, Todd, what are, what are your future plans with Young Money in general? Uh, you know, and also, where do you plan on bringing the tour in 2012 and 2013? Sure. Uh, the fall tour, we have a couple of events happening this summer uh, out in Las Vegas at College of Southern Nevada, Denver at the, actually uh, first second time doing an event at a, co- a base professional baseball stadium, Colorado Rockies. We're going to be doing an event inside wow. the conference center there, so that's going to be kind of fun in the summer. It's Excellent. With some of these two-year schools that have summer sessions, and we'll be doing an event here in Orlando in a few weeks. But the fall tour, uh, the schedule's not completely finished, but uh, we typically will go uh, all around the country. We, our revenue business model is sponsorship, and uh, we'll work with some uh, banks and uh, car companies and uh, some recruitment companies and even some potential uh, beverage uh, companies that are in the, you know, the energy drink area where college sure, students sure. kind of can relate to. So that uh, hasn't been fully scheduled, but we will uh, likely be in some you know, strong markets Arizona State, uh, we've been many places, Ohio State, University of South Florida, uh, you know, two-year colleges. We're really, we really are, are welcomed at, at nearly every college and university in the country, which is great. Well, please be sure to let, let me know, Todd, and I'll make sure to uh, publicize that on, on uh, Financial Ben accounts and on, uh, you're welcome to do a story on it, too, for FinancialBen.com if, you're, if you'd uh, be interested. Sure, sure, Absolutely. Great. Uh, well, the last thing I have for you, Todd, is how can listeners get in contact with you find out more, and find out more about Young Money? Sure. Happy. I answer as many emails as I possibly can, and it's uh, something that I uh, really want to do, especially those who, who really 
have questions and, and are you know genuine and, and trying to get ahead with their money. I can tell them a lot of my own mistakes with money, so it's not always been a, uh, a you know a rosy picture in, in my uh, money management life, if you will. So sure. uh, simply my email address t romer t r o m as in Mary e r at youngmoney dot com, and, and that's really the best way to get a hold of me. All right, fantastic, Pat. It's been a pleasure. I really enjoyed having you on. And, you know, once you guys get everything ready to go for the fall tour, I'd love to have you on again and and hear about the progress. Sounds great, David. Thanks for having me on, and and best wishes for continued success with Financial Ben as well. I think it's great. Thank you very much. Good Good luck to you. Thank you, David. Take care. All right, take care. Bye. All right, everybody, that was Todd Romer. Make sure to check him out at youngmoney.com. And remember, as he said, his email address is tromer at youngmoney.com. That's T-R-O-M-E-R at youngmoney.com. Now, we want to thank Todd for, for coming on tonight. It was really fantastic. I really hope you do, you do check him out at youngmoney.com. And I want to thank you all for joining us. Make sure to check out Financial Bin for the latest on personal finance and entrepreneurial advice. For Generation Y, don't forget to pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention, and I will I will make sure to let you guys know as soon as possible when Landlord Intervention will be available. It'll be a fantastic resource for you, any of you who 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 want to get into that real estate business. Uh, it's it's a how to guide, so it's going to tell tell you step by step, as I said. So be on the lookout for that, please. And until next time, I am David Mzowski. Thank you so much for listening. Financialbin.com signing off.